Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about 10 home server must have services. Myself, Muhammad Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So, without any further ado, let's get started. While I'm using Docker onto my system to make it a server and in my docker i have different containers i have portainer i have nextcloud and i have some other services installed into my system that offer different services so let's see what 10 things we must have in our home server number one is dashboard well dashboard is a space or area where you can get the information about your system its performance and what components are there at the particular time for example, this is the dashboard of my portainer and at the moment I have one stack, seven images, I have four networks, 13 volumes and five containers. For example, if I click on containers, you will get to know what type of containers do I have. I have a WordPress, I have database of WordPress, then I have Nostalgic and here I have another one. Other than that, you will also get to know about different other information in here for example here it is telling me about the environment it is at the local level this is its space and here we have its url so the first thing that you must have or you should have is the dashboard the next thing that you must have in your home server is the gui interface so that you can use that particular gui interface to include different services into your servers here if you see here i have my gui and from here I can include different services. Let's say I want to create a new volume into my server. So I'll go to the volumes of my portainer. It will open a new window for me. And from here I can simply click on add volumes. And from here I can name my volume anything. After that I have its driver down here. I have different configuration options that I can do. And I just need to click on this create volume button. And it will create a new volume for me in my portainer. Let's say if we had to do all this through our terminal or command line, well, it would have been a very difficult task for a lot of users because not everyone is compatible with command line or using different commands onto the terminal. So your server must have a user interface that people can use. On number third, a server should have different templates. For example, here I have app templates. Let's say you are using different service other than Portainer and you want to include some of the services in it. Let's say I want to create a new service or I want to add a new template into my system. So what I need to do, I should have a template available. So here I have different templates available. For example, if I want to include a Docker here, we have registry, we have Ubuntu operating system, we have Node.js that gets used for the development purpose. Then we have web server as engine X. And if you keep scrolling down, we have different templates available that we can include and we can use. Let's say you want to have your own customized template. So your server should allow your users to add customized templates into the server. Just like Portainer, here I can add custom template into my server and I can use it. So how cool is that? On number four, your server should offer storage services because there is no point of having a server that does not offer storage facilities or storage properties. For that purpose, I have Synology available in here as you can see. Here I have my Synology. This is its storage. I can directly drag and drop my files, my data, my video, my audio, anything into this particular storage facility and it is from Synology. Well, Synology is a NAS. It means network as a service. Means it has its own RAM, its own processor, and it has its own operating system just like this one. And you can offer and you can host different services on top of Synology and further you can offer them to your users. So how cool is that? But our point was to have a storage facility or a storage repository that we can offer to our user. So for my server, I have used Synology in here. This is its operating system. This is its interface and different application that it offers. Here we have Synology Photos. So what you need to do, you just need to sync your phone or your devices with Synology Photos and everything 
will be backed up or you can say everything will be synced in here on its own and you do not need to do anything you can get the apps of Synology from the Play Store and App Store as well and you just need to upload your photos in that particular app and your photos will be in here on their own so how good is that let's close this one and let's talk about this file station here if I right click I have two options in terms of upload upload skip upload override upload skip mean if we have a file already available in here it will not re-upload it but it will skip it but in case we want to upload it anyway you have an option that says upload otherwise and not only that if you have anything uploaded you can delete it from here as well or you can download it as well and it is not only for the admin anyone can do this who has access to Synology file storage that was all about the file storage and let's move ahead on number five we have file repository well as you can see this is my next cloud and next cloud is a service in this we have files so basically in this particular repository you can upload your different files and then you can share such files or those files with anyone who's a part of your next cloud so basically you just need to upload your files into this repository and you are good to go so basically this is my documents in case if i want to create a new folder i just need to click on this plus icon and i'm good to go or in case if I want to utilize these folders that are already available by default I just need to open any one of these and in that I can upload my files so here I have different files available and let's say I want to share any one of them so for that purpose I just need to click on this share icon and from here I can copy the link or I can include those people who are part of my next cloud and I'm good to go on number six we have github integration well if you are a developer or let's say if you are a programmer you must have used github at least once github is an open source repository where you can upload your code or you can download the available codes for free and github is one of the most fast growing phenomena among the programmers and developers and software community so your server must have integration available for the github because we know that a huge chunk of our user can be from the programming community so for them github integration is a must so here you can see in my next cloud i have github integration available and it is up and running after github integration the next thing is onedrive integration onedrive is another online repository that people use oftenly and it is not sure that people will use your server or your services directly from their desktop they can upload different files different data different pictures audios videos from their online repositories to your repositories as well so that might be the case for onedrive as well so it is better to have onedrive integrated in your service so let's search for onedrive and let's see if it is integrated here or not and here we have one drive available and it is enabled into our system and it is up and running so this is one of the other service that you must have integrated or available in your home server the next service your home server must have is a two-factor provider or two-factor authorization provider well if i just click on this one here it says two-factor provider basically it's a two-factor authorization service that ensures that no unauthorized person is able to access the network or access the service access the software or application this phenomena is very common nowadays in almost all sorts of applications and in almost all sorts of platform so it's a good to have that you should have two-factor authorization provider in your home server that will ensure the security and it will act as an extra layer of security on your home server on number nine we have application support well as i'm using my next cloud and in that let's say i want to include different applications so for that purpose what i can do i can go to its dashboard and let's see if we can include some of the required applications into our next cloud service this is its dashboard and if i scroll down here it says customize so let's just click on it from here it says get more widgets from the app store so i'll just click on it and I'm sure it will allow me to download or you can say it will allow me to enable different widgets or application into my next cloud for my future use. Here I have different categories of applications. Here it says active apps, app bundles and down here we have games, integration, monitoring, multimedia, 
office and text organization and different other categories so from here i have different widgets available that i can include into my next cloud service onto my server and obviously people or user will be able to use this particular service so how good is that at the number 10 we have download option here i have my files let's go into this one let's see if we can download these files or not because if we cannot download our files there is no point of using any servers on the internet so this is my documents and these are different files already available well the process is same for all kind of files i'll just right click on it and from here i can download this particular file so just right click on it and click on the download option and it will allow you to download files onto your local computer or onto your local machine as you can see so i have downloaded it from my server onto my local machine and this is how it looks like same goes for my Synology. Here I have my file section. I'll upload one and then I'll download one from here. So here I have my file available in here. I have just uploaded it. Now I'll just download it. Download it, I'll right click on it. And here it is giving me the option to download. Yes, we can download it from here. So it shows you that why it is necessary to have download service available onto our server. So these are 10 different things that our home server must have. At the end, I'll show you one bonus thing and that is monitoring. If I go to my portainer service and from here, if I go to my containers, here I have five different containers available. I'll open any one of them. Let's open our WordPress. So from here, I have stats available. If I just click on it, I'll be able to get the stats of my WordPress and what it is, how much memory it is using, how much cache is using. And here I have its CPU usage information network usage, input output usage, etc. And if you scroll down, you will get to have more monitoring data that you can have in terms of your WordPress. So how cool and how easy it is. So these are different services that your home server must have to offer to its users. Although it's a home based server, but still these services are one of those services that are necessary in order for your home network to work appropriately and sophisticatedly. So I hope now that you must have liked watching this video and you must have known that what are the services that you should consider. If that is the case, please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. I'll get back to you in the next video.